Here's an interesting TPA question. To be able to correctly solve this, you need your conceptual knowledge of unitary method. You need to know how to convert between units. Then you also need to know how to translate something that is in terms of percentages. Overall, in general, also translation is an important skill here. Then you should be comfortable in working with variables. There are so many unknowns that you'll find in this question. Let's just get started and see. So this is about a person called Julia who's planning to sell her car. And this car then they tell us about is that it's fueled by gasoline or petrol and it averages 20 miles per gallon. Now this is all of the information about the car that she's planning to sell. So let's put it here. What is the fuel that this one has? It's petrol. This is what it uses. Then the average is 20 miles per gallon, which means if I take one gallon of fuel, one gallon of gasoline, then the car will be able to go 20 miles. Now, after selling this, she's not just planning to stop, she's planning to purchase another car. This car now is diesel fueled, so the fuel has changed and the average has also changed. So, I will put it here in a buy row. Okay, now as we read further, we find more information. She estimates that her future cost per gallon of diesel fuel, future because that's the car she's still planning to buy, will be 5% higher than her present cost per gallon of gasoline. So we are talking about a connection between the cost per gallon with the two fuels and I'm just going to put that as cost per G. So what are we saying again? That the diesel cost, this one, second one here, will be 5% higher than the gasoline cost. So I need some variable to be able to use this. Now at this point, you should always see if the question itself uses any variables. Yes, there are no variables here, but sometimes they also give you a variable in the question step. So at this point, I want to see if they've already used a variable for the cost per gallon of either the petrol car or the diesel car. So when I read this, it says X represents uh, Julia's present annual cost per gallon of gasoline. So we really do have the cost. And then further on, it talks about something else about number of miles and I haven't come to that yet. So I'm going to use this X that we just found for the current car here. Now, because the diesel car, the cost was 5% higher, that's going to be 1.05 X. So this way, you're never doing the same thing twice. Although I still haven't read what the question is asking and I should never do that till the point I completely understand this. So I only went there for the purpose of finding the variable. And this will happen in questions where there are unknowns and you need to take a variable. Checking once whether they have given something to you is always better. Okay, now we're till here. Let's read further. She wishes to estimate. Okay, now these are things she wishes to calculate. What? First thing, the annual cost of fuel for her new car if she maintains her present annual total miles driven. This is the first quantity she wants to determine. And the second one is this, which is the total annual miles she can drive. Okay, how many miles can she drive if she maintains her present expenditure? So in the first situation, what's happening is she's maintaining the total miles driven. And we want to see what's the new cost in that case. In the second situation, what she is maintaining is different. This time she's maintaining the expenditure. And in turn, you want to see what is the distance that she can go then. How many miles? Now, instead of starting to calculate all of this, we will now go into the question stem to see what they are asking. Maybe these things that she wishes to estimate are precisely what's asked, but we'll go and see and then we'll come back and do as much as is needed. If you found the analysis of this data set helpful, then hit that like button so that other GMAT aspirants can also learn from it. And to stay tuned with such content, hit the subscribe button below. Now, to take your learning to the next level, we have put together a free trial in which you can experience content in all the sections tested on GMAT Focus Edition. For example, you can build your CR pre-thinking skills, you can learn how to approach statistics questions in graphics interpretation as part of DI, you can learn everything about linear inequalities as tested on the GMAT Focus Edition and a lot of other content. The link for this is in the description. Now, let's get back to the question at hand. So let's read further. We had already figured out, we had already read this part that X is something which represents the present annual cost per gallon of gasoline. Okay. Now let Y. So here's another variable. Let's highlight that. Let Y equal her present annual total miles driven. Okay. Select for cost an appropriate expression for her estimate of one. Okay, this is this is the first quantity that she wished to estimate. And select for miles an appropriate expression for two. 
So we really do need to find one and two that were talked about. And of course, as you see, it's all in terms of variables because I don't have exact values. Now, although we've already taken X up there, we haven't still taken Y. Y is the present annual total of miles driven. So I'll just put this on the side right now. We don't know where and how we will use this, but we now know Y is equal to total number of miles driven. This is the present total with the gasoline car. Okay, this way. Now, let's put all of our energy into finding the first quantity. So understand very carefully what the first one is again. You will first of all maintain the present annual total miles driven. And present annual total miles is Y, as we just got from the question. Which means even in the new situation, the total miles driven will remain Y. So I'm just going to keep it this way. Then, what are we finding? The annual cost of fuel for the new car. That means you want to find the total cost of diesel because that's the fuel for the new car. So total cost of diesel is what you want. Now look at what you have about the diesel car. One, you have how much does it cost per gallon. Two, you have how many miles it can go per gallon. So you have these two relationships, both of which are per gallon relationships. That means for one gallon, the car can go 30 miles. And for one gallon, the cost of fuel is 1.05x. Essentially, then you have this connection between miles and the cost, right? The dollars and miles. And that is precisely the relationship I will use here to be able to find cost using miles. I wanted this connection only. So it's pretty simple. You just have to use unitary method here. Essentially, if 30 miles cost this much, you want to know how much would Y miles cost. So I'm going to do it this way. If 30 miles will be 1.05x, first you can get it to 1 mile. 1 mile is simply going to be 1.05x over 30. And now if I'm doing it for Y miles, I will multiply both sides by Y. And here here I have an expression for the first quantity in terms of x and y. I'll just go into the table and see if I get exactly this expression. If not, then we will see what else to do. So 1.05xy over 30. And I perfectly do see that here. Look, we're done. At this point, let me ask you this. Could you have arrived at the approach of solving this question with this level of clarity had you not spent the effort in thoroughly understanding the information presented? Such is the power of the process of owning the data set. And because this skill may not come naturally to many of you, we have created a course architecture that ensures that we teach you this skill through every guided quiz in the EGMAT DI course and we reinforce the same in every practice quiz. In fact, in the TPA quant modules in the two-part analysis course, we teach you how to get comfortable with this question type. You will gain the confidence to handle any question of this type in the most efficient manner. We serve more than 58 specially curated questions at the right progression so that you can learn various aspects of this question type, including the process skills of inference, translate and visualize. Thus, throughout the DI course, through around 500 questions, you will learn such process skills so that you can also comfortably use the owning the data set approach. Let's now get back to the solution at hand. Now, similarly, let's go to the second one here. Okay, so second quantity is, let's again write this down here. Second one is about the total miles she can drive on the new car if she maintains her present annual expenditure. So in the first one, the thing that you maintained, the thing that stayed steady was the total number of miles, which is something we got in the question stem. But now the thing that you're maintaining is the present annual expenditure on fuel. But do you even have the entire annual expenditure? Not already, but you can get it. It's the petrol car you're talking about. You're saying, on one gallon, you can go 20 miles. You're saying it costs X dollars per gallon. And you also know the present total miles. You can use all of these things to get the, the present total expenditure in an entire year first. Let's see. Let's take this on the side. Okay, here we are. So this is the thing that we need to maintain, the thing that will stay the same even on the new car. So first we'll find this. Let's see. So you want the total cost of petrol for the entire year. Now see, these two relationships, if I see just the same way as we did on the first part, these are both about one gallon. So I know that for one gallon, the car goes 20 miles and for one gallon, the cost is X dollars, which means 20 miles, the cost is X dollars. So this way you get a connection between miles and dollars. 
From here, if you get it for one mile, it's going to be x by twenty dollars, and then finally for y miles, which is the total for the year, it will be x y over twenty. So this is the annual cost that you are going to maintain even as you go to the diesel car. Which means what? If I write it for the diesel car now, for the diesel car, this way I already have the total annual expenditure set. I cannot spend more than this, so I can only travel more or less based on whatever the situation is. Now you have to use all of this diesel car information to see how many miles can you go in these many dollars. So let's see. Again, you want to connect miles and dollars only, which is the connection we found in part one. Look here how we found that the cost of thirty miles is one point zero five x. I'll just take it there. Okay, here you go. So now I know these many dollars can help me go thirty miles. I want to see these many dollars can help me go how many miles. So you are working on the dollar side. So you can first find it for one dollar. That in one dollar, it's these many miles that you can go. So if you multiply both sides by x y by twenty, you will get the total miles that you can go in the entire total annual expenditure from the petrol car. This way, this is your number of miles. Now you can see how x and x gets cancelled out. So you simply have three thirty y. Over 1.05 times 20. Now I'm not going to just start simplifying this. We'll see how this is presented in the table, and then accordingly we'll see whatever is needed. Let me take it there. Perfect. Let's see how this exists in the choices. You just have a y. There is no x, so this choice is out. This can be one. This can be one. This is out. This is out. This is out. So we only have to think between these two. Which out of these two expressions matches our situation here? The first thing I notice is that both of them have a three by two, not thirty twenty. But that's very easy to do. You simply cancel out the zeros from here. So three by two part is steady. Then besides that, I have a y over one point zero five, which is present here. This one it's multiplied, which I don't want. So my answer for the second column is this, and we're done. Now let's summarize everything. We began by completely understanding everything that was given to us. We visualized this in the form of a table: the fuel that the two cars had, the average, and the cost per gallon. To express the cost per gallon, we needed a variable, and we saw that before we take a variable, we should go into the question stem also to see if they give us anything. If not, we would be free to take it on our own. Now, with this complete visualization, we went into the next part of the question, which told us about the two things that Julia wished to calculate, and these were precisely what were asked in the table as well. Now, when we worked on the first one, we used one of the variables given. One thing was to be kept constant: the miles driven. Based on that, we just had to see what would be the new cost. Why? Because petrol and diesel they do have different costs as different averages. The second quantity, though, is where the present expenditure had to be maintained, and we wanted to see what's the actual new total miles that would then be travelled. So here, then, we first found the cost that was to be maintained, and then this is the cost we took to the diesel car as well. Throughout, it was just unitary method converting and finding what exactly we needed in both of these parts. Once we got our expressions, we came into the table here. While、well, the First one we found directly in the table. The second one we had to do some simplification to see that it matched with the second row here, and that's it.